How's it going, guys? Welcome to The Rev, episode one. Uh, I just want to get on here and uh, say happy St. Patrick's Day for all of those, for all of you that are out there. And uh, hey, what better day to make a debut uh, for this channel than on ha uh, St. Patrick's Day, which is one of two of the biggest uh, drinking days in, in, in the year. So I want to try and encourage you guys, give you guys a little bit of motivation and encouragement to get through the weekend, man, just to, just to be safe and be careful out there. So with that being said, my name is Tommy Frankson, and uh, I'm here in Antioch, California, and I get to uh, do cool stuff like film and, and go to the beach and go snowboarding and, and all kinds of travel all over the place. But hey, that wasn't how it was possible. Um, I did travel a lot, but then I went to... I uh, went on a bender where I didn't get to travel too much, so pretty thankful for that. But anyways, I want to share with you guys a little bit how I got here to California. Um, so a lot of you guys know, for those of you that don't know, uh, I am from Alaska. Wasilla, Alaska, born and raised in Point Hope, Alaska. Lived in Anchorage for 15 plus years, lived all over the state, drove all over the state, did just about everything you can do in that state. Uh, but now I am here in California. I was a, was a snow person. I chased the powder. I went and rode the mountains quite a bit. But as I got a little bit older, I just uh, decided to change the scenery. So I was sitting in, uh, let me see. Well, I went to a program, a rehab center in Sitka, Alaska, and I spent six months there. And uh, when I was there for six months, I started to dabble with church and check out to see who this God is that I had grown up with. But I, for the last 18 years, I had no idea who God was. I thought I did, um, but I didn't. Uh, so anyways, after spending six months in a program, um, going into church and in and out of church, started to make a habit of it. And when I did that, God started to move and started to speak on my behalf, started to answer a lot of questions and stuff just started to happen. But as I finished up the program, I ended up back in Wasilla, Alaska. And in Wasilla, Alaska, I had been clean for going on a year now as I worked for a little bit and, and when I stayed in Sitka. So I was clean for about a year and I started moved back to Wasilla to go and see how I can start my new life and my new journey there, you know, and as I got back there, everything was great, everything was good, I was super pumped up, um, although I had lost all of my friends, I still had some family members who were, who were fighting for me and pushing, pulling for me, um, but in that process, you know, I started to dabble with this church called King's Chapel Wasilla, I started to go in and out of these doors that they had over there, my parents went there, so I started to go into this church and I was there for about a year in and out. But as I showed up there, even after being sober for one year, I was always the, the last guy in and the first guy to leave. You know, I was, they, I didn't want anybody to talk to me. I wasn't going to share any story with anybody because all the pain and everything that I went through just wasn't going to happen, man, because you don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. So why would I even share anything with you? And now I'm trying to find out who this God is and I wouldn't let people poke at me or, or, or ask me any questions uh, except for this one guy who kept kept making it his priority. Uh, maybe not making it his priority, but he was consistent. He kept coming up to me and he kept trying to talk to me. And as I went there for a year, as like I said, I was the first guy in and the last guy to leave. Uh, I had this one guy who would just constantly see that I showed up there and he would come after service and he would right before service ended, he would come and try and sit down with me to try to get, just uh, let me know, let me know that he was there. And uh, so he did that for a while, even though I wouldn't give him the time or day to um, talk to me, he just was consistent and that meant a lot to me. So then that guy's name is Micah. Thank you, Micah for uh, doing your due diligence and thank you for encouraging me. Even though I didn't want to talk to you, thank you for always just being that guy to just uh, stand in the gap and say, hey man, I care about you. I want to hear your story, so thank you. But anyways, from there I started to go into, um, I started to get familiar with everything that I was doing there in Wasilla, Alaska. And then uh, next thing you know, I started to make the phone calls that I probably shouldn't have made. 
And as I started to make these phone calls, I started to get messed up again after I just spent a year working on myself. Now I'm back at it and I am in Anchorage hanging out um, at uh, some, some old friend's place and ended up doing my thing again. And I got so frustrated and so uh, out of, I didn't want to do that again. I don't want anything like that to happen again. I didn't want to go down that rabbit trail that I just worked so hard to break. I've been in recovery for pretty much my whole adult life and I finally went a year without it, without heavy drugs or alcohol. But anyways, I reached out to King Chapel Wasilla and I wrote them a letter or a text or something on their website and said, man, I can't have my family see me go through, uh, see me go through this again. And uh, I believe when I did that, something got unlocked and God heard my battle cry. And uh, what happened next was pretty amazing because we had a three, we had a one week revival with Jonathan Shuttlesworth. And during that one week of revival, um, we, I started to go to the noon meeting and to the afternoon meeting and the evening meeting. And in that time, I started to learn to give and I started giving everything. I started to give, man. I gave, I gave what I could. And, you know, God gave me a number in my, my, my heart. And, and you know what? I got close to that number. I didn't get that number, but I got close to that number. Um, but in, in that process, um, I made an altar call for the first time in 18 years. And when I made that altar call, I walked up to the front and stuff broke off. And as I went up there, somebody went and grabbed me and started praying for me. And as he prayed for me, he started to prophesy and speak some things over me that pierced me at the heart that I could not forget. He just uh, said some th stuff that I had no idea um, what was going on, but he said some stuff that really resonated with me. And I was like, I don't know how this guy could have known that. How could he have known that? But anyways, after that altar call, um, I went and went back and did my own thing, went back to my house, but they extended the, the, the deal. They extended the revival for another week with Jonathan Shuttlesworth. And in that next week, I was just sitting there uh, standing in the aisle in the next, on the chair next, uh, next to my dad, standing up, minding my own business. And the same guy walked up to me and said, you know, God is just waiting on you to make a move. And as he did that, I was just like, man, I was getting ready to move as it is. And when he said that, I knew, okay, kind of put everything into perspective. And, and that guy is my pastor today, Pastor Aaron. And I'll tell you about the journey, how I got here to Antioch, California. So as, as after he said that, I already had plans to leave. I loaded up my camper, my truck, threw everything that I had. Uh, and I was going to go to Baja, Mexico, and I was going to go surfing for the winter. And uh, it was the one time I finally got a chance to go surfing. I always wanted to surf, never had the chance to ever surf the wave uh, in the ocean, but now I'm going to. And since I just got out of rehab, I needed a destination. So I gave all of my friends and family a destination saying that I'm going to Baja to go surf a wave and I have a destination, a place where I'm going. Now they think I'm just a little bit less crazy, even though I'm pretty crazy. And. Uh, we just kept pushing forward and as I took off, I left. I finally left Wasilla, Alaska and I got onto the highway there and I got past Glen Allen and hit a snowstorm, parked, pulled over on the side of the road, woke up to the most beautiful picture that God painted for me. It was so clear on a lake, mountains covered in snow. I had the picture to prove it. Look on my Facebook. It's the backdrop there. That's what I woke up to. God just sending me off. And as I got to the border, I was still messed up, man. They called me in and border patrol and I thought I was going to get arrested. I thought, oh man, I'm like something. They're going to find something wrong with me even though there's nothing wrong with me. Um, I didn't have anything, anything like that. But as I did that, they, they checked me out and said, good to go. And I took off and I left. And as I was driving through Canada, the last day before I got into America, I pulled over at a rest stop and I grabbed all of my medication that I had, every bit of it. And I was on some medication, basically it's synthetic heroin. And the withdrawals that you get from this medication is twice as bad as the real deal. And that's what I was trying to do was get off of this medication when I was in Wasilla by you getting back on the real deal to get off of this. Is that crazy cycle that we all go through. But anyways, right, through all of my medication in the outhouse, and I left and I said, God, if this really is you, this, this is it. Can't go, I can't do this anymore. I can't be medicated anymore. 
And though, for those of you that don't know, I've got a lot of broken bones, man. I've been through a lot of stuff. Um, so anyways, I gave myself about four or five days and I said in five, about four or five days, I'm going to be pulled over on the side of the road sicker than a dog and uh, be withdrawing, going through all of that fun stuff. And guess what? I got into Seattle and then God said, leave Seattle. And I got back on the road, went to Colorado and about a week went by and I'm staying with some friends. I was in Colorado for about two weeks, staying with a bunch of friends down there. And during this time, God just kept giving me peace every night. I kept going to sleep every night. There was not one single withdrawal. And about two weeks went by and God said, go to California, even if it's just for one service. So I got ready. Um, one day, it was a Friday, I just said, told my friends, uh, hey, I'm going to California. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, to California, I guess. But before that, I argued with God and I said, you know, God, that's 16 hours out of my way. I'm going south. I can go right to Arizona, right into Mexico, and right to Baja. Um, but I decided to go to California for one service. I knew we had uh, something over here in California campus, um, but I wasn't too sure where. So I just Googled Kings in California, and it brought me here to this place. And I, I took off on a Friday evening and on a, uh, uh, drove for two days, and I pulled over on a Saturday night. Woke up at like five, six in the morning on Sunday and drove the rest of the way and drove right into King's Chapel, Antioch. And when I walked through the doors of that church here in, in King's in Antioch, the power of God hit me, which I couldn't deny. God just said, son, you're finally home. I've been running and gunning for 18 years. I've been trying to find a home, been trying to find all kinds of stuff, man. My mind was all messed up and I finally got this like peace that I'm home. And uh, I met Pastor Aaron and Pastor Keenan here. When I walked in, they were just like, who are you? I was like, I was like, man, I, I met you in Alaska. And you, you, you prayed and prophesied over me at the altar. I met you at an altar. And then uh, just went from there. And then after that, you know, I've uh, been here a little over three years now. And within that three years, I started working with Pastor Aaron. But before that, I told him my story. I told him I need to get to Baja, Mexico. So I started to take off again. I went to go visit an aunt for a few days down in Mariposa up by Yosemite. And when I got ready to leave there, I went through Yosemite around uh, the mountains up around the Sierras into Death Valley. And a week later, I ended up in Death Valley and I was coming up to go to Escondido to go stop at a buddy's house uh, for the night before I went over to Baja, Mexico, before I jumped the border. But as I came around Death Valley, I came up to the road and that the road I was on I-5 and God said, are you going to go left or are you going to go right? And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, God? Now I'm going the complete opposite way. I'm not just going west. Now I'm going north. I'm supposed to be going south. So what did I do? I got up to I-5 and I ended up taking a right. And I drove back in here a week later to that next Sunday. And I said, you know what? I have no idea why I'm here, but I just know I'm supposed to be here. Talked to Pastor Aaron. He started working with me and took me under his wing and Started showing up, did all these uh, projects here and just worked and worked and worked and worked and made the most of it. And that was three years ago. Today, now, I, you know, in those three years, I, the ministry was never on my radar. I was never planning on being a minister or, or, uh, or, or doing anything with the church other than being an attendee on maybe a Sunday or something like that. But now I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm on staff and it's been crazy. I run a ministry here called Transformations. You know, I help every, everything that I just went through. I, I help people go through that, you know, people battling with the mind and stuff like that. People that just need a little bit of extra, a, a pick me up, a little bit of extra courage to get through the week. So I help them do everything that I can with that. and. And that is my testimony and how I got here to Antioch, California. So there you have it. The Rev episode one. I'm telling you, God can do it. Revelation 12, 11, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony that you shall overcome. You know, and, that, and there was a lot of other stuff that I left out that, that I'm not going to share with you just yet. But I have, you'll, you'll, you'll get to hear about it soon. So I hope you guys have a great week and be safe out there. St. Patrick's Day. Watch out. I don't even know how you say drink safe. Don't drink at all.
Drink soda water. <laughs> Let me pray with you guys. Call Go from there. Father God, I pray for each and every person that is listening to this. Father, I pray at the sound of my voice, Father, that people would just be moved. Father, I pray that your presence would fill them. Father, I pray for our protection over them. I pray that the hand of God would continue to watch over them. Everybody that's going and doing their thing tonight, Father, I pray for favor over them. Father, I pray that you would send out extra legions of angels, Father, to protect the people that are going out there tonight. Father, I pray for for families to be united and I pray in this season that you would continue to encourage people as they step out in faith and do what they've been called to do and I pray all of this in Jesus mighty name amen